everyone welcome back to my kitchen we are going to get started today um, I have another cookbook that you can get from the library the recipe that we're making today is wh why you got to do all these pop-ups Facebook what is this hang on Facebook stop okay <laughs> The cookbook that we have today is available at the library. I'll bring it back this week, so if you're interested, you can go ahead and grab it. Um, today we're doing um, Cook Like a Rockstar by Ann Burrell, and we are making killer mac and cheese with bacon. As usual, I am modifying this recipe because um, way back, I think in the beginning of stay-at-home orders, I made macaroni and cheese, and I think it was Elton Brown's recipe. I think it was another Food Network person. Um, and it had onions in it, and I kind of didn't like the onions. It was like a little too casserole-y for me. It wasn't really like the mac and cheese I was looking for. So um, this recipe also has onions, so I'm not going to use the onions. Um, but when we go through the recipe, I'll tell you where that where that is, and and uh, if you want it, you can use it. I'm not going to, but yes, the recipe's on our website for another few days. Um, and then later today or tomorrow, depending on when that happens, I'm going to put next week's recipe on there, but I'll show you it before we go. Um, so if you want to cook along or watch this video later and cook along later, that would be great. If you cook this recipe, let me know. I'd love to know what you think. So we're going to get started with our mac and cheese. I have already boiled my pasta and it's in the sink draining. I did not rinse it. Um, did it say? Just says drain the pasta. Usually you don't rinse it because you like the starches that are on there really add to your sauce. Um, I This recipe also calls for bacon, like I said. So I, I already started cooking the bacon in the microwave uh, just to get it started because it takes a long time and the whole kitchen smells like a lot of bacon. And sometimes I like that, sometimes I don't. Today I wasn't feeling it. Um, so um, we're going to start by cooking the bacon. So you start drizzle a little bit of olive oil in a large saucepan and bring the pan to medium heat. Stir the bacon occasionally when it's brown and crispy. Remove it from the pan um, and keep keep the bacon fat in here because um, we're going to use it for flavor and for fat. So I'm just going to I need to get some oil. Where's my oil? a little bit of oil. I just want to render out the last bit of fat that didn't render out in the microwave. Just a little bit. And I have about six slices of bacon here. Let me turn on my heat. Alright. Don't need it to be super high and I'm gonna go ahead and just, oh here we go. I'm trying a different camera position so I get more of the counter but I guess I'm gonna be over here a lot today so I could probably move it. I just, I'm not a camera lady, I'm a librarian. I'm gonna put my bacon in here and then I'm gonna move the camera. Just want this to get crispy. I'm gonna get rid of this. Oily, gross. rendering out some fat, which is good. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera again. It's like always, you never know what to do here. Okay. Ready? We're gonna move. And it's not gonna be as high up, but that's okay. All right, this goes here. Shift the cookbook down here. As long as you all can still see everything. All right. Here we go. I hope that's better. Let's see. Yeah, you can see. I'm gonna tell my head still cut off. This is yeah. This is like a science. I don't know. I don't know what this is. All right. Keep stirring. You don't want your bacon to burn. 
seeds. You want it to get crispy. You want to get rid of all that gelatinous fat, right? And then let me go get um, just a little bowl that I'm going to reserve the bacon in. So I'm going to scoop it out. Like I said, I'm going to leave the fat in there. So this is a really great recipe. Um, there is an option that it tells you like if you want to bake it, you can bake it in a 375 degree oven. But today I felt like doing stovetop. Stovetop mac and cheese stays so creamy and wonderful. So I wanted to stick with stovetop today. Um, all right, that's almost done cooking out, but just a little bit longer. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to toss this back in later at the same time that we toss in the pasta. And it's not going to continue to cook on its own with the pasta. So you got to get the, the fat rendered out now. Um, otherwise, you're going to get these big chewy bites of bacon, and that's disgusting. You don't want chewy bacon fat. You want the crispy, delicious part, and the fat is going to be part of our sauce. Um, what I've already done also, because I learned my lesson last time I tried to grate the cheese on camera, which was really sad and annoying, um, I have already grated my cheese. I have about two cups of fontina, uh, two cups of cheddar, and I finished my Parmesan cheese, which ended up being about a cup, which is what the recipe called for. Um, almost there, bacon. We're almost there. You're doing a good job, buddy. Actually, this is, I have like two pieces I'm looking at that I want them to get crisp and then we're good. Um, I also have, we're going to add butter in the next step to help make our sauce. I have flour, which I realized to myself is silly because I got gluten-free pasta for myself and I'm using flour. Um, but I, I wanted to try making like a real roux with flour and fat, which I've never done before because I usually don't consume flour or grain. So... Um, we have some whole milk. Of course, I always have sauce. That was my my Halloween bat. Um, and some Dijon mustard. The recipe also calls for hot sauce, which um, I don't feel like I want today, but you could definitely add a, a dash of Tabasco or Frank's or whatever your favorite hot sauce is. It just adds a little, a little extra something. All right, come on out, buddies. Now you're burning and you don't like that. All right, calm down. Side. They're nice and crispy. That's exactly how I like my bacon. I like it so crispy that it kind of like disintegrates. Almost. Come on. And I still have my fat in there, so that's good. Um, so at this point, this is when you would do your onions. Uh, the recipe says add butter and onion to the pan with the fat, season with salt. And cook until the onion is soft and aromatic, about eight to 10 minutes. I am not doing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my three tablespoons of butter in here and just let that melt. And then I'm gonna add my flour because I, I don't really like onions in my macaroni and cheese. All right, here we go. This is unsalted butter because you wanna be able to season it yourself. You really don't want salted butter. You can't control the salt content in that. All right, come on over pan. Butter is melting. All right, smells good. I love the smell of cooking butter. Is that weird? All right, so I need um, how much? Half a cup of all-purpose flour. Got my measuring cup here already. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. And you're supposed to. It says like mix it until it looks like wet sand. Then you add in milk, then you add in some, like there's a lot of, every few lines it says season with salt. And I'm like, okay, listen, that's a lot of salt. So I'm gonna, I'll get there. All right, this will be about half a cup. Get in there. There we go. And so this, yeah, so what we're making now is like a roux. Um, I'm gonna get a whisk for the roux actually. 
And of course, you're trying to cook your flour also. Raw flour is gross and not good for you. This does look like sand already, nice and fast. So I'm going to add in my milk. Slowly whisk in the milk. You're doing about a quart of whole milk. So that's what I got, about a quart of whole milk. And I'm just gonna slowly whisk it in. Gonna reduce the heat a little more, okay. And this, so this flour and fat mixture will help your sauce thicken up. Milk is cold, pan is hot, it's bubbling and bouncing. All right, wait, I need the whole quart. One quart whole milk plus more as needed. So I only have the one quart, but I think I have some hemp milk in the fridge if I need more. All right, here we go. Keep adding, keep whisking. You wanna get rid of the lumps. Thank you, milk. Okay, we'll rinse that and recycle it. Don't forget to recycle. I'm gonna add a little salt now because I haven't added any salt. The cheese is really salty too, so um, I don't wanna over salt. But remember that if you don't add salt, nothing is gonna taste like anything. It's just gonna be like, bleh. it's gonna be bland. You're not gonna taste the flavors. Salt brings out all of the flavors. So you don't really want your milk to boil, then it's gonna break and it's gonna be disgusting. You don't wanna scald the milk. We just wanna heat it. So what happens now is the mixture is gonna thicken up um, a little thicker than heavy cream, it says. You're gonna bring it to a boil and then simmer on low heat. So let's get the heat up just a little bit. We don't want it to be really high heat. Let that sit for a second. Okay. It's the smoke alarm. Hang on. Or not. Because I made bacon in the pan, that's what happens. Um, <laughs> I do have this window open though. <laughs> Um, but I think the, some of the smoke just like wafted over to where the smoke alarm is. So it's probably gonna go off again. So I'm probably gonna go open those windows. Can you lock the pot for me? It's always an adventure here in my kitchen. Um, so you just went off the two little beeps. I remember like when I was a little kid living in my parents' house and when we thought that the smoke alarm was gonna go off, my dad would go put like a plastic bag around the smoke alarm <laughs> if we knew we were gonna get ourselves into trouble. And then I learned that trick when I was in college and I would put a plastic bag over the smoke alarm when I was cooking in the kitchen because the kitchen in college was never clean. So sometimes you would go to like preheat the oven and you know, the previous college kids who don't know how to clean would leave a mess in the oven and it would instantly get smoking. I'm like, guys, just get a plastic bag and rubber band it to the arm. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what you do, right? Um, sometimes I just go like open the front door, but I don't know where licorice is and let's not go on a cat adventure today. All right. Always an adventure. Always. All right. Um, all right. So when you cook your pasta, you could cook your pasta now if you don't have pasta already cooked like I do because I just didn't want to, it takes forever for water, for water to boil, right? Like a watch pot never boils. But when you're making your macaroni, you don't want to cook it for the whole time because you really want it to be al dente because once you put it back in the pot, it's still going to continue to cook in your cream sauce. Um, so my pasta still has a little bite. It's still kind of chewy and a little hard in the center, which is, they call that al dente to the tooth. Um, just watch, make sure it's not burning or anything. So 
speaking of smoke alarms, in my last apartment, we had a smoke alarm that really needed to be replaced very badly. And um, not that it didn't work, it definitely worked, but it was very sensitive and it drained batteries quickly. So we made sure that we kept fresh batteries in there always and we eventually got it replaced. Um, but initially, because the batteries drained so quickly um, and ours had a voice, we would hear like sometimes at two in the morning we'd be sleeping and we'd hear beep, beep, low battery. And I, like my heart would always be pounding. I hated that alarm so much. I was very happy when it got fixed the worst because <laughs> no one wants to hear that alarm when you're sound asleep in the middle of the night right anyway so yeah who knew making macaroni and cheese today would lead us to talking about smoke alarms welcome to my kitchen okay so I'm still waiting for this to kind of come up to a boil waiting for that Watch pot never boils. Still, here we are. Um, but yeah, I also wanted to try this recipe, even though I made, like I said, macaroni and cheese earlier on in quarantine. Um, I didn't like the onions, so I wanted to try again, even though the sauce for that cheese was, it was so good. Um, but also, I can't remember, I can't even remember which cheese. I think I just used cheddar cheese in the last one. I don't remember, we'll have to go back and check the video. But I've never tried Fontina in a macaroni and cheese, and it's a really nice, soft, creamy cheese, so I figured that would be nice. And then the Parmesan adds a little zest, and of course I love cheddar. So I thought that this sounded like a really nice um, sauce to try. And like I said, I've never um, done this with, with actual flour before. I don't think I did that last time. I think that was one of the reasons why I chose it. I either have to like make a, a real roux. So we'll see how this works out for us. Um, right now it's not thickened up yet, it's still not boiling, right? It's still just regular milk. So I'm just waiting for this, this milk to come to a boil. Um, if anybody has ever made homemade macaroni and cheese before, let me know if you have a recipe that you really, really like. Um, I remember once I made homemade macaroni and cheese years and years and years ago. Um, I did it for like staff appreciation day when I worked at a day camp and I did with uh, pepper jack cheese and I did all gluten free. So I don't think I thickened the sauce with any kind of flour or flour replacement. I may have used um, a starch like tapioca starch or xanthan gum or something. Um, and then I spread it out and baked it on a pan actually. Um, and so it was crispy and then uh, still soft on the bottom. And then when you reheated it and it melted all together again, it was actually really good. Um, so now I'm starting to boil. So I'm just gonna stir this and bring it back down. And once it starts to boil, it gets thicker. And that happened quickly. So I'm gonna show you how it's already thicker. There it is. It's already thicker, if you can tell. And you just want to keep stirring. You don't want it to burn on the bottom. Let's see what else the cookbook says. Okay. Um, cookbook says low heat for eight to 10 minutes. Low heat, okay. Um, until the mixture is slightly thicker than heavy cream. Then you're gonna add in your cheeses. Good. Um, Whisk to combine, add mustard, a few shakes of Tabasco if you're using it, taste, adjust seasoning. Then you're gonna stir in the bacon and pasta. So this is pretty quick, you know, especially if you um, like pre-cooked your bacon like I did and got your pasta going. Like it's not, not taking us that long today, which is good. Um, this is definitely thickening up. I'm gonna give it another minute because it's still, still a little milky. I want it to be a little thicker, but again, just make sure you're whisk in all corners you don't want it to um, burn at any point but it is starting to coat the sides which is a good sign all right so what do i gotta do i gotta cheese and then i gotta do mustard so let's measure measure out the mustard mustard out the measure measure out the mustard which is uh just a quarter cup put this in the sink Our 
already done because I feel like once you start doing everything, now it's moving fast, which is good. Once I measure this out, I'm going to add the cheese. I think we're ready. All right, so that's about a quarter cup. So we'll leave that there. We'll put this in the fridge, and then we're ready to add the cheese. Um, all right, stir it up. Oh, yeah, this is nice and thick now. Gonna be good this is gonna be good um so here we are going to add the cheese um those of you like me who have thoroughly enjoyed um watching schitt's creek um either during quarantine or before i watched the whole thing in the first few weeks of quarantine um we are going to fold in the cheese um, and what does that mean i'll show you we're gonna fold in the cheese gently all right Come, let's fold in the cheese. So, I'm not like whisking it super vigorously. I'm just getting it in there. I want it to melt. We're folding in the cheese. All right, that's just a little joke for myself. Okay. Um, but I do want it to all melt, and it is. I mean, this is already looking so good. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, this is gonna be a nice creamy sauce. This is great. This is good. Okay. Um, add the mustard, and then I'm gonna taste it and see if I need any salt. All right, my friend. And honestly, I always use um, either mustard powder and vinegar or Dijon mustard, the tang, you need it. You totally need it. Um, like I challenge you to try it before and after the mustard, you totally need it. It's that classic taste that you're looking for when you're looking for a tang in your mac and cheese. All right. All right, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. It's really nice and thick and delicious looking. Look at that. That is good looking sauce. The other thing that I forgot to say is yes, I grated all of this cheese myself. Don't use the shredded cheese in the package because it has um, some stuff coating the cheese which helps to keep it from clumping and it makes your sauce break a little bit. Um, and it makes your sauce not as smooth and wonderful as this is. So shredding the cheese is worth it. Okay, so we're gonna add the bacon back in got some nice crispy bacon, a little crunch, and I'm going to add my pasta. Oh, I should taste it. Let me taste it. Taste it. Because if you need salt, now is going to be the time to add it. So let's see. Oh, it's good. I can taste the mustard. I don't think I need any salt, but you know what's weird? I want to add some more cheese. Is that strange? I'm going to add in some more cheese. I don't know. I just, I can never get enough cheese. So I'm just going to add in some more cheese, let that melt, grab my pasta, and stir that in. I feel like I just need a little more of that cheddar taste. The mustard's coming on a little strong. See, what did I just say? I was like, you definitely need mustard. And now my mustard is strong in this. I'm gonna add some more cheddar. But I mean, this sauce definitely thickened up. And that's the thing about when you use thickeners in a sauce, whatever the thickener may be, once it comes back to a boil, that's when you're gonna see the thickening happening. Um, if you're just sitting and you're kind of like, it's barely simmering and you're wondering why your sauce isn't getting thick, let it, let it get to a boil. Um, it makes the difference. I don't know the science behind that, but there is science behind that. Okay. I'm gonna stir this in. I'm gonna grab my macaroni. This is nice and creamy. Ooh, I'm excited. Okay. All right, here's my macaroni. Going in. Come on, get in. Got a little clumpy. 
because I let it sit for a while. And it's fine. Just go ahead. Just get that big clump in and I'll break it up with my whisk. Okay. Here we go. Macaroni all nice and stirred. Mix it up. Um, so of course we have to talk about like the best shape of macaroni for your macaroni and cheese. I prefer shells, elbows, or these you know spirals for ceiling um, because the, the sauce sits in all of the like nooks and crannies and curves. Definitely there is there is a superior type. Of macaroni for your mac and cheese, right? All right, so I'm still just breaking this up a little bit and stirring it, but it is coating all of my macaroni so nicely. Probably ditch the whisk at this point, right? And switch to a spoon. There we go. Ooh, this is so nice. All right, I'm gonna bring the camera closer again. move you closer so you can see what I do to finish this up which is probably going to be to add more cheese because there's something wrong with me all right here we go all right ready there we go there is my oh this is gonna go right into the pot stay there okay I'm going to turn this down I'm going to add a little more cheddar, a little more fontina. I'm just looking for a little more, like, I don't know, brightness from the cheese, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I have a cheese problem. And when I say maybe, I mean I do. I totally do. All right. good for that. Let me grab the Fontina. Which is so creamy, like I said, and really delicious and a very, you know, mild flavor, but just melts really nice. I'm actually going to turn off the heat because this is hot enough. It'll melt the cheese and then I'm going to serve it up and we're going to have lunch. in there. Turn off the heat, stir it up, good to go. Look at how good this looks, how creamy that sauce is, and it's definitely coating all of my macaroni. Then you can see the chunks of the crispy bacon in there. But because we cooked our bacon first, it's gonna stay pretty crisp. It's not, you know, like I said, the limp fatty bacon. All right, so I'm going to grab my bowl and serve it up and then I'll try to move the camera again so you can watch me eat, which is weird. All right. Look at that big chunk of bacon. We're going to get that. Okay. Oh, that's a nice... It has a nice big bowl of mac and cheese, and you can see how creamy it is. You can see all the cheese. That's a very big bowl of macaroni and cheese. Mom and Dad, I hope you want some macaroni and cheese. You're going to get some. Okay. All right, so let me move the camera again. Here we go. All right, here I am. <laughs> I'm going to get myself a uh, fork. Can I see the camera thing? This is weird. How do people do it? This is probably going to fall as soon as I walk away. Let's see what happens. Okay. Ready to try it. Let's see what the final... I mean, it is creamy. This is a heavy... <laughs> this is a heavy bowl of macaroni and cheese. This is also probably way more than a serving, but I'm hungry, so... Mm. 
good. I would definitely do less than a quarter cup of uh, the Dijon mustard, but I like it. It's unique. I'm glad I didn't do onions. I don't think I would have liked it with onions. I'm going to get a little piece of bacon in there. It's very hot, but I'm trying this for all of you. Mm. Very good. It stays decently crispy in the sauce. Not bad. Not bad. It tastes great, the bacon with the uh, cheese sauce, because why wouldn't it, right? Bacon and cheese. This is actually really good. This is very creamy. Wow. Um, sorry, I'm just like very happy with this. Enjoying it. Okay. So we've reached that time where it is just about time to say goodbye. Um, but I'm going to show you next week's cookbook. I'm pretty sure I know what recipe we're going to do. If I can find it again. Alright, so this is brand new. We just got it. It's not even processed yet. I stole it as soon as I saw it come in. This is the Primal Gourmet Cookbook by Ronnie Joseph Lovaski. Um, the recipe that I found is great for fall um, because it uses sweet potatoes. So if you're starting to get into that fall mood and you're enjoying your sweet potatoes, this is a good one for you. Let's see, let's see. Where is it? It looks really good. I think it's in the next chapter. I think this is the beef chapter we want. Is it in the next chapter? I had a hard time deciding because there are a lot of recipes that look very good. Um, oh no, it's this one, okay. Um, it is in the beef chapter, but I'm gonna use lamb because I have ground lamb already um, frozen in my freezer. And it does say you can use ground lamb. Um, sweet potatoes stuffed with spiced beef, tahini, and parsley salad. And so this is another one of those cookbooks that I really like because it tells you um, just how healthy it is. It is gluten-free, dairy-free, Whole30 and keto-friendly, paleo, grain-free, and sugar-free. Um, this definitely is not like a boring health food cookbook. The recipes are really good looking. They're good looking. Um, I'll show you what this one looks like. Look at that. That's a good looking stuffed baked potato. So it's stuffed with a meat mixture and then you do some parsley and onions on the top and then you make a tahini sauce, which I love. Um, especially with sweet potatoes actually. So that's the recipe we're going to do next week. If you would like to cook along or watch this video at some point whenever and cook whenever, um, I'll put that recipe up soon. Remember this recipe, like I said, for our macaroni and cheese is available on the website for a couple more days. And um, let me know if you cook it. Let me know if you try. I hope you all enjoy. And that is it for me today. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day and have a good lunch. Bye.